Hello and welcome to this Siemens PLC programming tutorial. Today we're going to be building a new project in TIA Portal version 16, which is very similar to the newly released version 17. That being said, we're going to be covering that in the next videos, but the goal for today is going to be to add a PLC as well as an HMI to the project, make sure that we can establish communications between both, and then we're going to be going online with a live PLC. Once you install all these software packages, you should have a number of different shortcuts on your desktop. That being said, we're going to start with TIA Portal version 16. So we're going to double click that and wait for the software to load. Once the totally integrated automation portal is open, you should have several options when it comes to your project. If you already have projects that have been worked on, you can open an existing project. You can also create a new project or migrate a project from a previous older system. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a new project. So I'm going to select that option. I will give my project a name of Solus PLC underscore getting started. And I can also change the path of the project. This is the default location. If you want to do so, you can press the path button on the right hand side and select a different location for your specific project. That being said, I'm going to hit on create and it's going to take a few moments to finalize the files. At this point, we can either follow the steps outlined by Siemens or we can move directly into the tabs that we desire to configure. That being said, configuring a device is going to be our first step. So you can do it by either clicking on here or you can select devices and networks. And from here, we'll need to select add new device. Since we don't have anything in this current project, it's going to be a blank screen. So add new device. And at this point, we are going to need to add a PLC as well as an HMI to our project. The tabs are self-explanatory, so we're going to have to navigate into controllers to select the right PLC. One thing to notice is that if you've purchased an S7-1200 starter kit, you will have access to those PLCs through the license. And if you've purchased the Sematic S7-1500 starter kit, you'll have the professional license that covers the 1200, the 1500, as well as the S7-3 and 400 series of PLCs. That being said, what I currently want to connect to is the S7-1200 series PLC, and the process is going to be the same for the 1500. So I'm going to expand expand the right folder, I'm going to expand the CPU section. And the two last things that I do want to mention, if you want to simulate a PLC, you can certainly select any device that is covered under your specific license. And the second item is that I have a safety PLC, which in the Siemens world is going to be labeled with a yellow bar here that you can see on the bottom of all these CPUs. So you do need to find the right model based on your hardware. For my specific case, that's going to be the 1212FC DC-DC Relay PLC. And as you can see, there's only going to be a single option, which when selected is going to demonstrate the part number, but more importantly, the firmware as well. And by default, when you choose that device, it's going to select the highest level of firmware based on what's installed in TIA portal. So I'm going to leave the highest revision yet. We're going to revisit firmware in a later video. So we're going to press on add and that should be able to add a PLC to our project. Since I had the open device configuration checkbox selected, we will be brought to the device configuration menu from which you can configure different parameters for the PLC. That being said, as I've mentioned, we do want to add an HMI to this project as well for simulation purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again, click on devices and networks. And here I can see the entire view of my system. We do need to connect an HMI to this PLC one, which is currently in place. So I just wanted to double check that the right model of the CPU has been added to the project. Of course, it's also listed under the IO tree. So what we're going to click next is add new device. And we will be shown the exact same menu that we looked at before. And in this case, we're going to navigate to the HMI section, select the somatic basic panel by expanding the menu. And in my case, I do want to simulate a seven inch display just because it gives us a little bit more real estate to work with. I'm going to expand this KTP 700 basic. And here we can select from two different screens. The difference is going to be noted in the 
uh, description. So we're going to go with the first one, press on OK, and that should be added to our project. If we navigate back to devices and networks, we're going to see our PLC as well as HMI laid out. What's interesting is that we can go into the connections tab and we can establish a connection between the two devices by simply clicking on the ethernet port and then dragging and releasing on the other port that we want to create a connection to. As I've mentioned a little bit earlier, we can establish this by dragging out certain tags once we get into creating HMI screens. That being said, this editor is very interesting because it allows you to see a visual representation of all the connections that have been established and it's important to have this in place for the simulation purposes. The bottom panel in TIA portal is going to be responsive to your selection. And what I mean by that is if you select the PLC versus you select HMI connection one versus you select the ethernet card that is going to be in the back plane, you're going to see a different menu. Therefore, it's always very important to pay attention to what you've selected. And here we do want to select the PLC and we need to look at the Ethernet addresses because we've already set that up on our system. And we need to set up the right IP address in order to be able to communicate with the physical device onto which we're going to connect with. And so in my case, that IP is going to be 192.168.1.90. And we're going to attempt to connect. I'm going to press this go online button. We should definitely get some errors because we are certainly not configured properly for the safety PLC. That being said, we should still be able to go online and connect to the physical device. Once the go online menu is up, we can select the interface that's going to be perhaps different depending if you're using a laptop, a desktop, if you have multiple ports, ports on your device. And we need to press this start search button, which is going to attempt to connect to the IP address that we have specified in our configuration. If the search is successful and a device of the same type is found under the specified IP address, it will be populated in the table below. And at this point, what we can do is press this go online button and the software will communicate with the PLC. The online confirmation for TIA portal is going to be the highlighted go offline button, the top orange bar in the project, and a couple of warnings that you can see in the left hand side that we'll need to take care of before we can download our project to the controller. That being said, the last thing I do want to mention that some of these steps or options in this general tab, as you can see, on my screen are going to be slightly different if you're not working with a safety PLC. So the warnings I had mentioned earlier are going to happen due to the fact that there are differences between the online PLC and the program that we have in our project. So in order to download the program, we need to resolve these issues. So in this case, we're going to navigate to program blocks, expand the main OB1 in in my case, since we haven't written any program, there should be a single rung, nothing else. As I've explained, the warning is going to be because it is different on the online PLC. But you'll notice that once we are in this program, we're going to be able to either download to the PLC or we're going to be able to upload in certain instances. So here I'm going to proceed with a download to device. We're going to press on that button. We should be given a warning that we're going to overwrite the configuration of the PLC since I already had a program loaded onto it. There's also going to be a couple of differences in the PLC tags and the data types. And what we can do here is continue without synchronization if we want to overwrite the program. So I'm going to press on that. And you'll notice it's going to give us a couple of warnings. So number one, the safety program. So the safety program, as I mentioned, since I have a safety PLC, I will have to confirm the download. And here the stop modules, we can stop all of them and then we can load. You may encounter different errors, but you should be very easily able to resolve them through the action tab over here. And last but not least, we're going to press on load and we should be able to configure the PLC and match what we have in our project. Once the download is complete, you'll notice that we are now getting all green checkboxes that say OK when you mouse over them. And that's exactly what you want to see when you're going online and downloading to your processor for the first time. In any case, that's all I have for you today. And we'll see you in the next tutorial on Siemens TIA portal programming.